Enter the Peace Broker by Martin Wade. Episode 1, When the Lusitania Went Down. Introduced by Professor Sir Hugh Strawn. The story of the First World War runs in parallel with another narrative. The story of how to define peace and how to make that peace relevant to a world profoundly changed by war. When we think about the First World War, we focus on its wastefulness, the bloodletting and the battles. But from its outset, men called it the war to end all wars. As they thought about how to wage it, they also wrestled with the problem of how to end it, and to end not just this war, but all war. Not for the first or the last time, they discovered that it is much easier to start a war than to create a peace. Visions of peace can shape the conduct of war, but they can also obstruct peace. When states try for aims that outstrip their military capabilities, they prolong the very war they seek to end. The alternative is to propose compromise. But then they risk an unsatisfactory peace which can itself lead to the renewal of hostilities. As early as November 1914, Germany realised that if it was to stand a chance of ending the war on favourable terms, it would need to negotiate a separate peace with one of its enemies. For Berlin, the pursuit of peace became another form of war, a means of gaining a comparative advantage. For Britain and its allies, it became important not to give Germany the opportunity to negotiate a separate peace. In September 1914, Britain, France and Russia all agreed that they would not make peace separately. Now both sides had adopted an approach to peace that made it harder, not easier to achieve. In addition, all belligerents felt it important to convey to their allies, their own peoples and their enemies an uncompromising sense of resolution and commitment to war. Any negotiations therefore had to be indirect and covert. Peace had become a continuation of war. For some, the best chance of peace lay not with the belligerents, but with a neutral negotiator. By 1914, the United States had begun to engage more actively in Latin America and the Pacific, but it had steered clear of European politics. Global shipping, insurance and financial markets were concentrated in London, but the US was now the world's largest industrial power. Colonel Edward House, longtime advisor and friend of American President Woodrow Wilson, had only just returned from Europe when the First World War broke out. As early as the 3rd of August 1914, House was urging Wilson to use his good offices on behalf of peace. Within a week, the President had instructed American ambassadors across Europe that he would welcome an opportunity to act in the interest of European peace either now or at any time that might be thought more suitable. On the 30th of January 1915, Colonel House sailed for Europe on the Lusitania. His mission? To negotiate peace. Enter the Peace Broker is a Chrome Radio production, with thanks to the Rothermere Foundation.